Three years ago, me, my brother Billy, and his fiancée Gwendolyn took on the mammoth task of restoring this stunning French chateau. At first, it was just the three of us. But since then, the whole family has moved in to help bring this place back to its former glory. And not forgetting the newest family member, baby Ernest. We do everything ourselves, from fixing the leaky roof, managing the vast 60-acre estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were a hundred years ago. It's not always easy, but that's what makes life in a place like this interesting. My name's Michael, and I'm going to be showing you what it's like to live, work, and play at Chateau de la Bamagne. I've just woken up and seen that we have over 40,000 subscribers. That's happened in just over a week, so I'm gobsmacked. I'm just glad that everyone really likes the videos and I'm gonna keep making more. One thing I need to explain is that at the moment, we can't really do much DIY work and restoration because, well, as you know, most of the world is in lockdown, including France. All of the DIY shops, the builders, merchants, they're all closed and we can't get any building materials. So for now, we're just gonna to have to concentrate on other projects. Today specifically, I was meant to be doing some building work, but I can't do that. So what I'm gonna do instead is give you a tour of the chateau. Now there's quite a lot to see. I can't really fit all of it into one video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the video into two parts. So first of all, I'll show you all the downstairs rooms, the lovely grand rooms, the first floor bedrooms. And in the second part of the video, what I'll show you is all of the unfinished parts of the chateau, the stuff we haven't touched, and the basements and the servants' quarters. So I need to get up, get ready, and start this tour. Seeing as we're here, I might as well show you my bedroom. This is up in the top floor of the West Wing Tower. And I've got this whole place to myself at the moment, the whole tower, because everyone in the chateau, they all sleep at the other end of the building. I'll just show you what it looks like out of the window from my bedroom. I'll just open it. So there you can see, it looks out over the chapel and the forest. And just there is the guest house. And it's a long way up, you wouldn't want to fall. And there's another window, and this one looks out over the wall garden. There you go, that's the wall garden. And all the countryside beyond, you can see for miles from up here. And this is my desk where I do all of my artwork. I do quite a lot of watercolours and designs. But I've been so busy doing these videos at the minute that I haven't really had time to do anything. And that's my bed. And my antique union flag just above that reminds me of home. And there's an interesting story about this flag and how you know whether it's up the right way because a lot of people hang their union flags upside down by accident. So the way you can tell whether it's up the right way or not, you've got this large cross here in the centre. That is the cross of England. But you've got a second cross here, a red one, which is the cross of Ireland, Northern Ireland. And the way that you can tell if it's up the right way, can you see that this cross is not in the center of this white band? It's actually slightly to the left here, slightly to the right here. This cross, this thinner one, should be cartwheeled slightly to the left. Now that way you can tell that your union flag is up the right way. I'll just show you how high up the building I am, because if you go out here, you can see there's lots of bits that still need restoring. If you go up these stairs, this little door goes into the attics. And I might show you those again on the tour, but I won't go in there now because it's a bit messy. And you've got these old skylights that look out over the roof. And if you look down, you can see right the way down. So we're about four floors now above the first floor. So that's not even the bottom of the chateau just there. So it's a long way up. Well, I suppose the best place to start this tour is at the front door. So let's take a look around.
Well, this is the chateau's main entrance hall, and it's the where the grand staircase is. It's all made from oak, and it's probably the newest thing in the chateau because it was completed in 1920. So it's its 100th birthday this year. There's one thing about this staircase, actually. It really reminds me of Titanic. So you want to go to a real party? When we moved to the chateau, this entrance hall was not very pretty. It was, uh, well, somebody had painted it like a pinky yellow, I don't know what colour it was, but it didn't suit the place. So the first thing we did was paint it this sage green, and uh, I think it makes a big difference. It looks more Victorian now. Well, this is quite an interesting painting, not because of the actual woman herself, but more of what's been done to the painting. Um, originally, she would have been nude. Um, Somebody has added all of these robes here, 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 and a little piece of hair just there. So, um, it'd be interesting to see what's underneath. Well, this was actually a present from Gwendolyn's father, and we didn't know what it was when we got it, but we did some research, uh, and we found out that it actually was owned by one of the kings of France, and part of his royal baggage train. Well, actually, I've just found some paperwork that was inside the trunk. And as you can see here, this is the trunk here, and this is the Royal Arms of France. Yeah, so this symbol here is the Order of St. Michael. Me. <laughs> no, I'm not the St. Michael, but I am Michael. And the Order of the Holy Spirit, which is just on the front of the trunk there. Probably worth a fortune. Haven't got a clue how much. So just off of the entrance hall, we have the Winter Garden, and I'll just take you and have a look at that now. room but there's no billiards table we need to find one uh, and at the moment we're using it as the lounge because the grand salon is not usable we're doing work in there um, so this is a place where we sit and watch television um, just chill out and um, it's in the kind of arts and crafts style so it's a bit different to the entrance hall it probably dates to about 1910 the interior it's still got its original tapestry above the fireplace and also, this is where we keep the gramophone. So this dates to about 1920, so it's 100 years old, and it still works perfectly. I'll just wind it up. Right, that's enough of that. We've got a tour to get on with, otherwise we'll never finish it. So this is the Grand Salon of the Chateau. We've never actually used this room to live in. It's always been set aside for events, but we're doing a bit of work in here so that we can actually use it again the way it was intended. When we first moved here, the whole room had been painted one color, blue, um, and it didn't look very nice at all. It looked quite miserable in here. So what we did is we painted it this sort of off-white color, and I painstakingly, with a very, very small brush, painted all of these bits gold, and no masking tape, so uh, all freehand. But um, it looks nice, it looks a bit grand now, it looks more like a chateau. Well, this is my um, baby grand piano. Uh, it dates to about 1930s. It's not quite an antique, but it's still, still old. Um, my mum and dad bought it for me when I was about 14, because I've been playing the piano for quite a few years. It does need a bit of restoration, but it still plays quite nice. I'll give you a little tune, shall I? Well, I can't play anything that's copyrighted, so I'm going to play something that I wrote myself.
So this is the Chateau's bibliotheque, which means library. Um, I did show you it before in a previous video, but there's something I didn't tell you about this room, which is really interesting. Now, the emblem in this fireplace is the honeybee, and that was the official symbol of Napoleon. Now, an interesting thing is that this chateau was actually a gift from Napoleon to one of his generals, and this fireplace, may have also been a gift from Napoleon. So that's actually really, really interesting. And you can see the fireplace, the actual style of it is very, very Napoleonic. So um, it's quite valuable, that. Well, I've talked about this room before, so let's move on to the dining room. So this is the Chateau's dining room, and there's something really interesting about the ceiling. If you look at the ceiling, you can see that it actually looks like, it looks like wood, but it's not wood, it's actually plaster that's painted to look like wood. And whoever did it, did the most spectacular job because when we first moved here, we thought this was a wooden ceiling made from oak, but it's actually plaster. So that's craftsmanship at its best. So I'll just show you the fireplace in the dining room. It's probably the best thing in the room. Uh, well, you've got the cast iron here, which has got fleur de lis in it, which is the symbol of the Kings of France. Um, but what's really interesting is this bronze plaque in the fireplace. And the signature on it is a very, very famous bronze sculptor called Dubleur. And there is one of these by the same maker in the Louvre, uh, the museum in Paris. And there's also one in Versailles. And we've got one here. So this is our kitchen at the chateau. It's not actually the original kitchen for the chateau, that's in the basement and I'll show you that in a bit. But when we moved here, we desperately needed a kitchen. Actually, one thing that this kitchen has got that the basement kitchen hasn't got, and that's really nice views over the park. Just look at that. Beautiful. I'm sure you're all dying to see upstairs, so we might as well go and have a look. Well, this is the landing for the chateau. Um, as you can see, the ceiling here is absolutely stunning. And I had to, well, it's quite high up. I had to get up there with a ladder and do all the cutting in by hand. That was a bit scary, but um, it looks good. So this is Gwendolyn's office, I'll just show you. Gwendolyn's quite busy at the minute looking after Ernest, uh, so she hasn't had time to organise the room, so please bear with all of the uh, clutter. But it's a, it's a really nice room and I just wanted to show you because it's got some lovely bits of furniture in it. And um, this door here opens out onto the balcony above the front door of the chateau. Just take it out to have a little look. So that's it, granite balcony. So right now we're in the centre of the chateau. I'm going to take you west, go to the west tower. So just through here, down this corner, is the entrance to the servant staircase, which goes all the way down into the basement. I'll take you into this stairwell. Just take a look up there. Now there's a pair of these stairwells, one in each tower, identical, but they're a mirror image, and they go right to the top floor, right to the attics. Um, but just here, 
is the bridal suite that we use when we have weddings. I'll just show you. Now, obviously we've got no weddings on at the moment, so it's not all dressed up glamorously like it normally is, but I'll just let you have a little look. Now this room was a complete mess when we moved here. The ceiling was cracked. It was literally, there was a crack above the door so big I put my hand in it. So that all had to be repaired. Um, we had to strip back all the woodwork and paint that, uh, put the wallpaper up, um, varnish the floors. We did everything in here. Uh, I just want to show you in here, because this is really interesting. If you might have noticed in the title sequence, when I say at first it was just the three of us, you see me, Billy and Gwen, and we're sat in what, what looks like an absolutely destroyed room uh, with no wall. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like now. Just take a look. So this is it now. So I was sat here, Billy was sat there, and Gwen was sat there. And uh, that's a transformation. And we did everything in here ourselves. Like the floor was all damaged. We had to rip the floor out and put a new one in. Uh, it was actually two rooms, but it didn't make sense to have two tiny rooms. So what we did is we made a great big ensuite so that when people have weddings here, they can feel, you know, luxurious. They've got a nice space to get a bath in and, and get dressed in. Well, this is actually the first bedroom in the chateau that we ever did up. Um, and it was originally Billy and Gwen's bedroom, uh, but they gave it up to let it be used for a bridal suite and they did up a bedroom the other end of the chateau. And I'll show you that as well. So this is the picture gallery. Uh, as I said, we're just doing this up at the minute, but we've run out of paint. So there's a few little bits that need finishing off. But this runs the full length of the building. And I'll take you down to Billy and Gwen's bedroom, which we did up not that long ago. Hello, no one here? So this is Billy and Gwen's bedroom. Um, in fact, this was quite a big job actually to do up this room because the ceiling was completely destroyed. It actually looked like a shattered plate. There was cracks in it everywhere. Um, and there was quite, quite a big crack there actually, which I had to repair. You can still kind of see it, but um, it, was, uh, it was quite a lot of work, but it's actually a really beautiful room now. Um, it's quite simple, just a nice sort of off grey colour, sort of a beigey grey colour on the woodwork and this lovely gold wallpaper. But it's just really nice. This is Ernest's bedroom. Now this room I did up quite a lot by myself actually. Um, and it's... You okay Ernest? Do you like your bedroom? Uncle Michael did this one up, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I had help, but I did a lot of it myself. So this room, I chose the paint colour. Billy and Gwen let me choose the colours, which was really nice of them. So I chose this beautiful sort of aquamarine colour. And this wallpaper's got a really interesting story, actually. So just while Ernest is playing there, I'll tell you about this. Have fun. <laughs> I'll tell you about the wallpaper. Yes, yes. Yeah? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I've got the noisy toy now. So I'll tell you about the wallpaper. This wallpaper is actually a replica of a wallpaper from the 18th century that was found in a house intact in Axon Provence. And it was acquired by the, yes, you want it back? Yes. It was acquired by the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester and a company, Little Green, they made a replica of it. And yes, thank you. Yes, oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, so they had a replica made of it uh, and you can buy it. And it's actually a design um, from the 18th century. I think it was 1760. And um, there was an actual date stamp on the back of the original wallpaper that said it, although it was found in France, it actually came from London. So it was a copy of a very, very old 250 year old wallpaper. Actually, I'll show you these curtains. Another set of curtains that I made. In fact, I'm actually the only person in the chateau who knows how to make curtains, so whenever they need a pair, I'm the one who makes them. Uh, these ones are made for Ernest, and they're quite nice. Little animals on them. Um, actually, I'll show you this door lock. This one's beautiful. It's very, um, it's very Napoleonic, the style of it, actually. I'll just show you these light switches, actually, because um, 
when we moved here, the chateau, a lot of the chateau still had its original 1920s wiring and all of that had to be disconnected because it was deemed dangerous. Well, obviously it was hundred years old. Um, it originally had all of these beautiful 1920s light switches, but the old ones, they didn't comply to modern regulations. So Billy managed to find replicas of them that do comply. Um, and wherever he can, he puts them in and they are just absolutely beautiful. It's these little touches actually that, that really make the place look amazing. Actually, I should show you this. This is what I painted for Ernest for Christmas. It's a little Peter Rabbit. I do a lot of watercolours, but I haven't really had time to do many at the moment. But there's quite a few of them actually, I think. Ernest, have you got another one that I did? Where's your bee? You had a bee somewhere, didn't you? Disappeared. Well, this old alcove is where the bed used to be. And there's a little interesting detail in here, actually. There is a little doorway just hidden there. And that is uh, what we would call a modesty door. Because years ago, it was deemed inappropriate for the lady to get undressed in front of her husband. So what would happen is he would be in bed and she would be behind the door. Um, and she would disrobe, she would disrobe, <laughs> and when she was ready, she would open the door quickly and slip straight under the duvet, and he would never see her without her clothes off. Very bizarre, um, but that's what people did years ago. Okay, well that's the first half of the tour done. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you the rest of the chateau, the untouched parts, and the servants' quarters. But in the meantime, I wonder if you'd like to have a look around another chateau. I'll see what my friend Stephanie's doing. Let me just give her a call. Hello, operator? Hello? Ah, could you put me through to Chateau de la Lande, please? Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Hi, Steph. Oh, darling, how marvellous. I've been longing to hear your voice. Uh, right. Well, I was wondering if you could show a few of my friends around your chateau. But of course, you know I'd do anything for you. Anything. Right, okay. When were you thinking? Well, right now, if possible. I mean, if the place is ready. Right now? That's great, absolutely. Everything's looking amazing. You know I'm not the sort of woman who'd let things go just because of quarantine. Send them straight over. Oh, thank you very much. They're on their way now. Okay, toodle pip, darling. I look forward to meeting them. Well, bye then. Bye. 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 Well, looks like she's ready to show you around her place. I'll put a link to her tour at the end of this video, but come back next week because there's a lot more of the chateau to see. There's three upstairs abandoned floors that we haven't touched and the creepy basements. So for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.